Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I want to take you guys through the behind the scenes of this latest Jimmy G music video I just made called Whole Mood. This was a really fun one, and uh, I want to take you guys through scene by scene. I want to talk about a couple of the hardships that I faced creating this music video. And I also want to talk about the gear and show you guys a lot of the breakdown so you can create something similar. Now, the link for the music video will be down in the description if you want to check it out before or after this music video. Make sure you guys do that. Show Jimmy G some love, and also the track is fire. I love it. It's a lot different than a lot of the music that I've been shooting lately, and I think you will enjoy it if you go check it out. So with that being said, let's hop straight into it, man. The first scene I want to break down is the projector scene. This is the first scene we shot, and for this, I went to Best Buy and I just picked up a projector. I probably will return this in a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, if you're doing any sort of video work and you want the projector to be the only light source, you have to make sure it's bright enough to light up the scene and light up the subject in the scene. I believe this one that I picked up was like 3,300 lumens. I'll link it down in the description if you guys want to pick it up or you want to try something similar to this. I think this is a good option for it as an HDMI output. And what I did was I just ended up bringing my laptop to the set and I just ran a couple motion backgrounds that I got from Storyblocks. Storyblocks is the sponsor of today's video. I think this is a perfect opportunity to talk about them. Storyblocks is an online platform with tons of stock assets for your filmmaking needs. So whether you need high quality stock video clips, you need After Effects or Apple Motion templates, or you need motion backgrounds like I used in this music video, Storyblocks has you covered. They're all royalty free and they're all demand driven and I love the platform. Now, the really good thing about Storyblocks is when you sign up for an unlimited plan, you can download an unlimited amount of these stock assets. So what I did was I went on Storyblocks, I cycled through the motion backgrounds category, and I just found motion backgrounds that I feel felt like the energy of the song. I downloaded a ton of them and I put them in a folder. And when I brought these to set and I hooked it up to my laptop, the projector, I was able to cast these onto the set and pick the one that matched the scene perfectly. And uh, I think it turned out dope, man. So look, Storyblocks is awesome. It's gonna be a link down in the description to take you over to Storyblocks. I highly recommend you guys check out the Unlimited plan because it really unlocks the true potential of filmmaking and it doesn't make you settle on one thing. I love the fact that I had 20, 30 different motion backgrounds to choose for this project and it was awesome. So we set up the projector and we ended up moving it far away from the psych wall just to cover most of it, just to cover as much as we could because I knew I wanted to get a semi-wide shot for this scene. The camera gear that we used for this, we're using the Canon C70. We also use a Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 art lens. And I used the Ronin, which I haven't used in a really long time. I knew I wanted to get some smooth, like sweep in shots and sweep out shots for this video. It has a really smooth mood to it and I just feel like it would just add so much. So I just ended up using the Ronin for this. Now, this is where my first dilemma came in when using a projector. Projectors are awesome, um, but the thing you have to take into consideration when using a projector is that it casts shadows, especially when you're trying to fill out an entire scene. The fact that I was using a Ronin and the fact that I was going to be moving in and out on the set and on the psych wall, I had to position it in an offset way. So that way, when I was moving in and moving out on the set, I wouldn't cast my own shadow onto the wall. And these are things that you got to think about when you're using projectors. I could have casted it up high, but I feel like even as far as it was away from the set, I still would have been casting a shadow to do it straight on. So we just ended up offsetting it. And I think that this added a lot anyways, because it was able to cast his shadow onto the wall, which added a different um, focal point of interest for the shot as well. The fact that it's a slower song, the fact that the mood is smoother, we wanted to have him performing, but have his performance be in slow motion and still have his lyrics on sync. So the way that we did this was we ended up speeding up the track to 200%. And then we filmed the performance in 48 frames per second. And then in post, we slowed the performance down to half the speed. And his lyrics were on sync with the song, but his body and his movements and his facial expressions were all in slow motion. And it just gave the video such a smoother vibe. Um, so this is an awesome trick that I've used before in the past. And I knew I wanted to do it on this one as well. And I wanted to get shots of him sitting down on the psych wall but it turns out my tripod was too tall. So from there, it's just a bunch of improvising. Me trying to see, okay, can I put the camera on the floor and then prop it up with like my wallet or something? No, that's too low. Okay, let me go get the Aperture 300X uh, bag and put the camera on top of that. You know, these are the sorts of things that you run into when you're doing filmmaking. And uh, it's always cool to see how people solve these problems. So what I did was I just ended up using the 300X box and I put the camera straight on top of that. I propped it up with a couple different things. I used the Aperture MC light, put it under the lens so it propped the shot up a little bit. 
Um, it's just problem solving and it's just you doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of finicking with the camera to get the angle that you need. From there, uh, I ended up using the ladder for some higher angles. I switched off from the 24 millimeter Sigma art lens to a Canon 50 millimeter. Um, and also I tried some shots with the Canon 100 millimeter F 2.8 lens as well. I'll link everything that I'm talking about down in the description if you guys wanna check it out at all. I wanted to get a really cool shot with the model and Jimmy G laying on the floor and the 100 millimeter just turned out really good for that. Now, another problem that I did, and if you guys wanna do some projector work, this is definitely something that you should keep in mind. For some of my slow motion shots in this video, I wish I would have sped the motion background up to twice the speed. And then in post, when I slowed it down, it would have been normal speed. I didn't take this into consideration. So with some of the 60 frames per second shots that I got using the motion background, it looks kind of choppy. It looks like I filmed it in the wrong frame rate. Even though I didn't, it's just the fact that I didn't speed the clip up. So slowing it down even more, it just makes it look a little choppy and I, I hate that. But anyways, it's whatever, you know, you live and you learn. And I'm glad that I tried this out and I learned it. I love this shot regardless of that. But uh, if you pay attention to the projector, like light moving on the shot, you can see that it looks a little choppy. So that's the projector scene. Let's talk about the mirror scene. This was one of my favorites in the video. Man, I, I've always wanted to work with mirrors, but the reason that I, I haven't in the past is because when you're using mirrors, it's hard to get an aesthetically pleasing shot and not have things in the reflection of the mirror that aren't supposed to be in the set. And this is some of the problems that we were running into heavily trying to complete this scene. And, and, and the fact that we had two mirrors and we were shooting on a psych wall where the reflection of the psych wall, you can see the edges of it. It was just a bunch of things that we had to go through trying to build this set out, uh, trying to build the scene out and, and get rid of the reflections. What we ended up doing was we ended up flipping the entire scene the other way. So Jimmy G was facing the opposite side of the psych wall and then the mirrors were facing him towards the psych wall. And in the shot, I just wanted to have him performing in front of the mirrors and then he was going to be back to the camera and then you'll see his reflection in the actual shot. And uh, I knew I wanted to have some VFX done in this shot as well. So the lighting with the shot, we ended up using the Aperture 300X and uh, the Light Dome Mark II. And we just ended up booming this up above him using a junior boom arm. And we had a grid on the light to cast the least amount of shadows as we could on that background because we didn't want the background to be super lit up. We still wanted to have that be moody and we also didn't want all this light bouncing around. We had, I had this perfect angle set up. My bad. I had this perfect angle set up right here for the shot. Essentially, I wanna have um, Jimmy G performing, looking this way and then we'll see his reflection through the mirror like that, like y'all see me right now. My problem is we set up the scene that way and you see that little red exit sign over there? That's in a way. So we need to figure out how we can either get this out of the shot or if I can do this in post. This is in a way. This is in a way. Nah, yo, just snag the code on there. Just snag the code on that joint, yo. The easy way out, bro. Don't need, yeah, just, just snag the code on there. You're trying to 360 no scope right now when, when he's standing still. And you could just get the kill for, for the round six. That's shit. That's shit. My boy, my boy was trying to 360 no-scope the joint. <laughs> Gear we used for this shot was the C70 and the Canon 50mm f1.2 L series lens. And we just decided to shoot the shot static. And when it comes to the lighting for this, uh, the reason we used the fire effect on the Aperture 300X is because we knew in post we were gonna have to add the fire in VFX. And if you're ever doing VFX, anything that can manipulate lighting at all, you want to replicate that lighting on the shot. It's gonna be a lot easier and it's gonna be a lot more believable in post if you add the lighting that's similar to an actual fire happening uh, in the shot. So we set the Aperture 300X to fire mode and we upped the frequency of it. And that was pretty much the shot. It was a simple shot, but the fact that the VFX went in there, the fact that uh, the composition was awesome, the fact that we got the reflections, it was a really cool uh, creative shot. So the next scene is the side profile shot of Jimmy G performing um, with uh, the model. And they are on fire in this shot as well. My inspiration for this shot, actually, I uh, saw a snow video and 
it was like a very short clip in there, but I'm like, yo, I love this. I love this composition. I love this interaction between her and uh, ASAP 12 was in her video. Anyways, I love that angle and I love that, uh, that pose. So I'm like, yo, I want to do something like that. So I ended up setting them up for the shot and then for the lighting for it, it was the exact same lighting that we used for the mirror shot. We still had a 300X, we still had it in the same place, we still had the fire effect on it. And we kept the fire effect on it because we knew that we were gonna add the fire in VFX and we wanted it to be believable. Um, so we shot the shot static, C70, 50 millimeter, and in post we added the fire and then added a little bit of keyframes to give it a slow zoom out. So the next shot are the beauty shots of the model. Now the lighting for this was almost identical to the lighting for the previous shot. The only thing that we didn't do was we didn't use the fire effect and we ended up pushing the light angle backwards a little bit. And the reason we did this is when you have lighting that's completely overhead, it casts uh, dramatic shadows. And if you're filming a model and you wanna get beauty shots, you don't want these sorts of shadows. So what we ended up doing was just pushing the light backwards a little bit. And this just made the lighting a lot more flattering on her face. It gave her some really nice shape to her face and nice details. Uh, I love the way that these beauty shots came out. I ended up using a variation of the Canon 50 millimeter, uh, the 1.2, and also the 100 millimeter F2.8 on these shots. For the super close shots, it was the 100 millimeter. Uh, those macro shots, those really close detail shots of her eyes and her lips. And I also ended up using um, some creative filters from Tropicolor as well. I have the half kaleidoscope filter, and I also ended up using a split diopter as well to get some of those cool stylistic effects with the beauty shots. When it comes to like directing models or directing anybody, I'm like the worst director in the world. I'm really good at composing a shot and, you know, setting up a scene and doing all that sort of stuff like that. But when it comes to putting somebody in a scene and telling them what to do, I'm horrible at it. So uh, my tip for it and the way that I get through it and the way that I make it as easy and like less awkward as possible is I go through and watch a lot of the music videos that I love and I pull out certain poses that I see either the model's doing or the artist doing and I'll pull those up on set and I'll be able to show them exactly what I want them to do. And in unison, it's a lot less awkward for me to try to explain something where I can just show them exactly what I want them to do. So for the model, I just had her doing really simple things like, okay, turn your body to the side and then look forward and then look at the camera. It looks really cool when you catch people in motion. So I always keep that in mind. So I'll do, I'll tell her things like, okay, look down at the floor. Okay, now look up at the camera. Okay, now look right and then look back at the camera. Turn your body this way. It's just really simple things, but if you catch people in motion, it makes them feel a lot less awkward and it just gives the shots a lot more emotion. And I like that as well. So that's a really quick tip and um, a pro tip for me anyways, when it comes to giving direction. I'm horrible at it. If you can find uh, a reference or you could just put them in motion, Typically things turn out really well. And for the last and final shot in the music video, the shot of them holding hands, this was the exact same lighting setup. I just ended up backing the tripod out to get the shot a little bit wider. Um, and I knew that it was gonna be the light stand in the scene. And in post, we just ended up removing that and getting them a clean slate and a clean background for us just to zoom out for the end of the music video. So that's it, that's the end. That's the Jimmy G whole move behind the scenes um, take. Make sure you guys go check out the music video. The song is fire, the music video is fire. I definitely feel like this is something that uh, you guys will enjoy. Down in the comment section, uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this behind the scenes. Let me know if you want more behind the scenes. If you're new to the channel, you like content like this, consider hitting that subscribe button. But with that being said, I'm out y'all, peace.